Hello, everyone. Dr. Vicki here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center. We're going to take a look at the astrology of the upcoming week. That is the 12th to the, I think, 19th. Um, so we're going to go from uh, Sunday to Monday, I believe. Well, we'll see. Um so before we get started, I want to welcome all my new subscribers. Welcome to this wonderful community of folks who like to gaze at the stars, as it were. <laughs> and for all my tried and true, welcome back. Of course, thank you for supporting me all these years. Now, uh, we had a very uh, active beginning of the month. Uh, we've had a very active year. <laughs> kind of an active decade. It's just been very active. Things have just been flying at really, um, and it's been going on for years, but let's specifically talk about what's happening this week. Um, a lot of energy um, in the sign of Taurus, and of course, Taurus deals with our essential needs. And so we are coming to understand what our essential needs are, we're coming to understand who has their essential needs met, who doesn't. Um, and of course, uh, with Uranus and Taurus, uh, there's always issues around land and, and and the like. So let's take a look. And, uh, and not to mention, um, there have been any number of um, Earth events, uh, including volcanoes and earthquakes, uh, which always happen, it seems, but we become more aware of it as we begin, as we become more connected to each other. I think we can see more patterns and there's definitely an increase when the planet of shock and awe is in the sign of earth, fixed earth. So those things that we thought were fixed, um, those things that we thought were unchangeable, uh, have gone through quite the transformational change. And a lot of it's been messy and a lot of it's been explosive. But, um, and that continues because Uranus isn't done with Taurus yet. Um, but um, Jupiter almost is. Jupiter is uh, just at the end of Taurus this month. So let's let's jump in. I don't want to go further than that. We'll go day by day because there's just so much stuff going on. So. Let me share my screen here. Okay, so we're looking at the astrology specifically from May 12th to May 19th, 2024. Let's keep in mind as we approach this astrology um, that we are in an eight universal year vibration, meaning it is a, uh, a year of manifestation both instant manifestation and manifestation of seeds planted over the last seven years. Uh, we are in a five month. Five is the vibration of change. Five is also the vibration associated with the Hierophant card in the tarot. And that always speaks to us of listening to that small, still voice within. When we add those two vibrations together, we get a month, month year vibration, which really is the vibration of May. And that is a 13-4, which is the death card. And the death card indicates change. So we know that this is a time of great change. It all is also a time of letting go of that which no longer serves in order to build a new foundation for the future. So we are letting go of things this month. We are also uh, building a new foundation, something based on something new. We just had a new moon in Taurus, that new moon, spoke to us of a, a continent rising out of the ocean, a new continent, pure receptivity, as it was called, um, and this ability to recreate the world that we're in. We do have the ability and the power if we have the drive, if we have the drive. And I think that uh, the drive is here. <laughs> Driver's here. All right. So let's take a look. Uh, we start uh, right, right from get go. Um, Monday the thirteenth. Uh, today is the eleventh, so it's it's a little quieter t today. Perhaps the weekend is a little bit of a respite. Maybe hopefully uh, for a very very active week. We start the week with the sun making a conjunction to Uranus, 
Now the sun is illumination. Uranus is sudden change. This uh, conjunction occurs at 24 degrees of Taurus, an Indian war riding fiercely, human scalps hanging from his belt. That's probably, that's pretty macabre. Uh, symbol, uh, channeling aggression, channeling aggression. Um, I do want to point out that the sun in the chart for Israel uh, is at 24 degrees of Taurus. And uh, the sun in a chart is um, usually indicative of the leader of that country. And we know that the leader of Israel is Benjamin Netanyahu, who is now under a lot of pressure to stop his uh, the way he has been fighting um, the campaign in Gaza, getting pressure from the American president, some of us might say, finally, finally, some of us might say, well, most of us probably on this call or on this, in, in this, it says finally, finally, but there are those people who are like, what are you kidding me? You're just going to leave them there and to not defend themselves, um, which isn't really uh, what the president was talking about. It was more, is less about defense and more about offense and aggression and a proper way of channeling that aggression, if there is such a thing as proper channeling of aggression. I, I I think the jury's out on that. But it's very interesting that this is the focus, right? This is what we're seeing. And of course, Israel has its sun, and I maybe Jupiter as well in Taurus. I have to look. I have to look. Um, I might go to that chart if I have time at the end. If not, I'll do a separate video on that for you guys. Uh, I do want to do a video on Israel and Gaza and the astrology and do a card reading on it. I sort of held back a little bit because it's so controversial and uh, um, difficult really to to navigate that energy. And, uh, you know, when you're working in these realms, you, you do have to take things as you can take them. You, because there's a lot of uh, consequence to your energy body when you put yourself into uh, these very, very difficult situations, um, especially when you're empathic. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, the same day, we have Venus. Uh, this is the, uh, the 13th. We have Venus making a waxing sextile to Neptune. Uh, means, oh, sorry, a Venus making a waxing sextile to Saturn. Saturn, of course, is in Pisces, the sign of humanity, um, the sign of 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 aid and humanitarianism, um, but on a more sort of spiritual level, um, and it's a healing energy and it's a spiritual energy, and Venus, Venus and Taurus, very practical, making that sextile sort of opens the lines of communication around those things that uh, perhaps could aid, uh, bring some aid and comfort to those who most need it. And of course, Gaza and Israel aren't the only places on the planet that needs aid and comfort. Um, we just had, um, was that last week or the week before, uh, the aid package is finally going through to uh, different countries through the, through the house and through uh, Johnson, who... Uh, almost lost his speakership again, except that the, the Democrats backed him up um, for being uh, for doing something brave and something that was sorely needed for our allies. Um, except maybe weapons to Israel, but that's another story for another day. Offensive weapons to Israel, not defensive weapons. Everybody deserves the right to defend themselves. In including the Palestinians, guys. But this is why I don't want to talk about this stuff now because I don't want to piss anybody off. This stuff is so important to hear, not the, the political stuff, but the astrological stuff that I don't want to, uh, I don't want people to get turned off by my opinions about what's going on there. Um, although I know nobody is comfortable with what's going on there, no matter what side of the what side of the line you might be on or what perspective you might have. 
So that Venus waxing sextile to Saturn, opening lines of communication and information gathering. We're actually gathering a lot more information and we're actually getting a lot more information, not just in places like Gaza, but also, uh, or maybe we've had the information and probably people are finally paying attention all over the world where people, women and children and, and you know, folks are suffering um, because somebody just decided to take what they thought was theirs, even when it wasn't. Um, on Wednesday, the 15th, we have Mercury ingress into Taurus. Mercury has been in Aries. <laughs> also, Mercury has finally moved out of its shadow. Uh, it, it That might have actually happened a couple of days ago. But we can feel that. We can feel Mercury coming out of its shadow because we see there is progress really on the ground when it comes to having our voices heard, perhaps. Um, but now it's in Taurus. So now Mercury in Taurus is much more pragmatic. Uh, it's slower. Uh, so things will start to slow down. Perhaps the, the, the flow of information will start to slow down a little bit, maybe become a little less overwhelming as it uh, as it has sort of been. Um, and of course, Taurus, um, uh, Mercury's been in Taurus, I mean, Mercury's been in Aries for a long time. It um, it was in Aries, um, went through Aries and then turned around, went retrograde at the end of Aries. So, uh, and then it went retrograde and then it went forward. And so it is really sort of, run the gamut of uh of Aries energy and of course Aries is very warlike very initiatory very aggravating very irritating and so we have been <laughs> aggravated and irritated and of course um that all sort of feeds into a lot of the uh, uh protests that we're seeing we have to remember that you know the sun um the North Node is in Aries, Chiron is in Aries, the United States is having their Chiron return in Aries, and we can't discard Eris, the goddess of discord, in Aries. Of course, she's been there since 1925, but now, um, and since about, I want to say 2016, and maybe maybe before that, I, I, the 2010s, we'll just say, we'll call it the 2010s, because I can't remember exactly, Um Eris was um, square Pluto. Uh, Eris was conjunct Uranus. So we had those Uranus-Pluto uh, squares through 2012 to 2020 to 2015. And then Eris came on the scene, or though not really coming on the scene, she's always been there. But whenever we suddenly become consciously aware of a planet, it expresses itself uh, more overtly and also uh, we understand it a little bit better because it's not hidden from us. And so Eris has uh, only been a planet, I think, since two th it's either 2003 or 2006. I think it was 2006. Uh, we became aware of her during the George W. Bush administration. And, uh, you know, she's a big player. She is a she is a, a, a goddess of discord, but she's also a goddess that doesn't like um, elitism. Um, she doesn't think that anybody's better than anybody else. And that sort of lines up with um, the Pluto in Aquarius. Now, Pluto just moved into Aquarius uh, and is at the very beginning of Aquarius. But eventually Pluto is going to be making sextiles. Uh, towards the end of its its run through Aquarius, which is still like, you know, 18 years. So we got plenty of time to deal with this. So we're not going to talk about it today. But just know that there is change and things are going to be pretty profound as we move forward. But we're just at, I feel like we're just at the, the beginning of the move forward into a new way of being. And so it's important for us to um, put our best efforts out there to make things uh, grow and develop in the way that would be most beneficial to the most people. All right. So we have uh, on Friday, Mercury making a last quarter, a uh, first quarter, excuse me, square to Pluto. This is a crisis in action. Mercury, of course, is action. It's also speaking up. Pluto is power. This is a crisis in action on seeds planted at the Mercury-Pluto conjunction, which occurred at one degree of Aquarius. Uh, all those personal planets back in uh, February 
coming together with Pluto, right? We remember that we had Mercury, we had Venus, we had Mars all coming together with Pluto. Right around that time was the time that Navalny was uh, un unalived. Is that what people are calling it now? Unalived? Uh, possibly, most likely, uh, if not directly murdered, uh, eventually uh, killed by uh, Putin. So, uh, so there was a shift in power at that time. And we can feel the shifting tides of power that's been going on really ever since uh, Trump lost the election um, in 2020. So, all right. So what else do we have here? I just have to move something so I can see it here. On the 18th, Venus makes a conjunction with Uranus. The sun and Venus are, you know, pretty close to each other. Um, the sun is, is first and then Venus will follow, but it's at the same degree, 24 degrees of Taurus that Indian war riding fiercely. So we'll look at that more closely and see what the Sabian uh, symbol people say about that. Um, and then we have uh, on the same day, we have the sun conjoin Jupiter. Now the sun and Jupiter are the two largest planetary bodies in the heavens. And uh, they come together every year. And this time they're coming together at almost the very last degree of Taurus. You know, the sun illuminates and Jupiter is understanding. So this is an illumination of our understanding, an illumination of our belief systems, um, perhaps an illumination of our opinions. But uh, at 29 degrees of Taurus, we have two cobblers working at a table. And we'll talk about the symbol, but it, it is respecting other people's point of views. You know, not everybody has the same point of view, and yet we all have to walk together. And so we need to create the shoe for our understanding, so to speak. Uh, and then on the 19th, which happens to be my anniversary, we have the sun making a waxing sextile to Neptune. Uh, sun is illumination, Neptune is spirit. This is a time when we can open the lines of communication with spirit. This, this energy brings sensitivity and the ability to read people and situations. Much greater empathy and receptivity. Um, hopefully, this will benefit those people who really need our compassion and our consideration. Okay. And then lastly, on the 19th, Mars, the ruler of Aries, is conjoining the North Node in Aries. So this is really a push to move in a new direction with Mars on the North Node. Now, it is close to Chiron and all that, so we will see how that uh, works itself out. We can see here in the middle, uh, we have uh, the shift this this uh, this week, we have uh, the Sephiroth of Mercury moving from Aries moving into Taurus. We have the conjunction here of the sun and Jupiter. The sun and Jupiter, this is the Sephiroth of Jupiter. This is the Sephiroth of the sun. This activates this path. This is the path of the hermit. And so this is about wisdom. It's about healing. The hermit is nine, the vibration of nine, unconditional love, humanitarianism. So, and in Taurus, it's real humanitarianism. I feel like perhaps... Uh, in the case of what's going on in Israel and Gaza, that they might actually get some food. Uh, they are starving. Uh, it's not bad enough that they're being bombed and they're being displaced. Um, and it's it's the most horrific thing that I think I've ever witnessed in my lifetime uh, in technicolor. Um, and uh, it's just, it's beyond the pale for me, uh, no matter what side of the, the, the aisle you're on, it it just is beyond the pale. But we can see that perhaps the 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 sh the energy is shifting finally, and people are finally saying, "Wait a minute, let's let's." Um, we have this is the Sephiroth of the Sun here um, in Taurus, and then we have this sextile, which activates the sextile between the Sun and uh, is it Neptune? Yeah, the Sun Neptune. This is the path that gets activated with the sextile. Sextile is opening lines of communication. And this is the uh, um, high priestess. And so we can have some secrets come out 
some understanding. We, we're going to get that, you know, the sextile is about gathering information. We're going to probably get a sense of what's really going on and what's really at stake and what really happened. And it's going to be horrifying. It's going to be horrifying, I think, for people who didn't imagine that that could happen. For those of us who saw it coming or had a bad feeling about the whole thing, um, unfortunately, I think we're going to be proven um, that that our instincts were correct on that. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, uh, really, it's it's really just about bringing peace uh, to a situation that 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 sorely needs peace. So let's take a look at these uh, these actual days, these actual uh, charts. All these charts. Uh, my apologies to anybody who doesn't live in the U.S. who, who follows me. Um, I I I sometimes will use an Aries rising chart uh, for these, but I do like I wanted to add in. Um, make them charts for the U.S. So these are all for a Washington, D.C. Um, and so that this would indicate, you know, the energy for this country, the United States, with these aspects, sort of where they fall and how they might affect us. I just think that we're such a big player in this whole thing that um, it's important that we look to see um, what's going on from the perspective of what possibly could happen here in the U.S. Uh, of course, <laughs> last week we had the uh, uh, the trial for Trump. Stormy Daniels spoke. Uh, well, she could be a lawyer, that one. Um, she decimated Trump's lawyers, really. And then this week, I believe we're going to hear from Michael Cohen. And I believe he's going to do it on Monday when the sun conjuncts Uranus. So this is awakening. We're going to see there are things that are going to be coming out um, and maybe shocking things, maybe things we already knew. But certainly um, the uh, Pandora's box is being opened and we'll see what falls out of that. Uh, 24 degrees of Taurus and Indian war riding fiercely. Human scalps hanging from his belt. Channeled aggression. Now, this can also apply to Trump as well. Uh, one side of human nature, one side of human nature needs to be channeled properly instead of being denied its natural aggressiveness and potential for violence that can arise when survival is in doubt. And I think that is the, the key here. When survival is in doubt, people get aggressive. And uh, I think that's, you know, true just in general. Um and this is the symbol that's being activated and, and awakened. The vibration of that day is the uh, page of, of wands or the princess of wands. We can see it down in the right-hand corner there. And that is a vibration of Sagittarius. But it's also a vibration of psychism, like being psychic and, and getting messages. It's a messenger. And the messages come from spirit. So listen to keep that inner, that inner dialogue uh, with your higher self. Or that small still voice within uh, pay attention um, to the messages that are coming in through spirit um, keeping a direct connection with that so i wanted to look at venus at this time because venus is the ruler of taurus and so we have the sun and uranus the sun illumination the uranus awakening in taurus what's venus what's venus's influence it says a woman airing out an old bag through an open window of her room the mind that is conditioned to make judgments about right and wrong creates a prideful ego that limits the soul's evolution. It must become open and then cleansed of bigotry and prejudice. And isn't what's going on in the world, no matter where you look, where there's people suffering needlessly, isn't it based on bigotry and um and uh and prejudice we are each other's keepers there we are one we have unity we are we are all human and when we hurt another human we're trying to kill that within ourselves which we do not accept we need to accept our humanity and we need to raise our 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 eyes up to the connection Humanity is a combination of spirit and earth, human, humus, dirt, mana, mind, the dirty minded human. Um, and the 
great power that is located in the heart. That is love is the greatest and only really healer to the human condition. And so instead of hate, we need to open up to each other uh, for love. Now, let me just uh, read here what I have here. The sun conjunct Uranus. This just in general, um, you know, as an energy for the day, let's just keep the politics out of it for a second. Um, signals a time of excitement, unexpected change, freedom, and rebellion. So, uh, and of course, we can we can connect this to what's going on in the colleges and the universities, many of which are canceling their uh, commencements, which for those people um, who graduated high school in 2020, uh, who couldn't have a commencement uh, are now uh, also being denied a commencement uh, for their college uh, graduation those who had a four-year degree, you know, not everybody goes in that, in that way, but many do. And, uh, for simply, uh, speaking, uh, up against it's speaking their truth. Right. So, so there's all kinds. And then of course we have to also look at press freedoms. Oh my God. Of course that, that energy, the whole press freedom stuff, what's going on with the press and how so many reporters are being uh, killed uh, purposely in the case of, of certainly of Gaza, if anybody knows what's going on there, um, Al Jazeera being kicked out of, um, Israel. Um, uh, I think that's going to become more of an issue when Jupiter moves into Gemini, which is actually going to happen, uh, not this week, but next week. So there is, there, that is shifting as well. We'll talk about that when we get to it. Monday, the 13th, Venus waxing sextile to Saturn, opening the lines of communication and gathering information. This actually, this cycle actually began at the conjunction of these two planets, uh, at 13 degrees of Pisces. That occurred back on the 21st of, um, of uh, March, right after the, um, the, um, um, the solstice, no, the equinox, the equinox, the beginning of spring here in the Northern hemisphere, 13 degrees of Pisces, where this initial conjunction occurred is a sword in a museum, single pointed certainty of purpose, asking us to, to be certain about the direction we're taking. And Venus is about love and Saturn is structure and Pisces is humanitarianism among other things. And so this was a call to, uh, you know, to structure aid, I think, and comfort. That's how I read it anyway. Other people might read it in a different way. Now we have Venus at 18 degrees of Taurus, that woman airing an old bag through the window. We saw that in the last, um, the last slide, making a sextile to Pisces um, at 18. And it, so it's in a gigantic 10 villagers witness a spectacular performance. We are subjected to the pressures and support of our community, which sometimes focuses its attention on us alone. And so this is in, in, in its way, a real, uh, 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 maybe even a call uh, and, and opening lines of communication to let go of those old prejudices um, in order to move forward on really what the people want to see. Okay. And again, we're in that page of wands energy and pages are young people. And so the young people are giving us a message and we best listen. Speaking of messages, <laughs> May 15th, uh, Mercury moves into Taurus, uh, the mind stabilizing, become becoming less bellicose and more pragmatic. However, we can all tend to stubbornness. So this can bring out the stubbornness. People can dig their heels in. Venus, the ruler of Taurus, I always look to see when a planet moves into Taurus, what the ruler of that planet of that sign is doing Venus, of course, also in Taurus, but at 20 degrees of Taurus, wisps of wing like clouds streaming across the sky, spiritual forces, energy and beings from other realms expressing themselves through our willing participation, a willing participation with unseen spiritual forces. Spirit is with us. Spirit is with us. We need to speak 
of practical matters. We need to speak of the truth. We need to be compassionate, okay? Compassionate. Taurus, for all its stability and all its stubbornness and all its whatever, <laughs> sorry, Taurus, is a Venus ruled sign. Is a Venus ruled sign. Okay, so let's take a look at this square. This is the square between um, Mercury and Pluto. And here's the square right here, which is very interesting because it's part of a hammer of Thor configuration. And the handle of that, that hammer is the moon in Virgo. This is people and Virgo is the need for healing, the need for aid, the need to fix what's broken. And, and as if this isn't powerful enough, we have Saturn making an opposition to that moon. This works just like a, another configuration that I've, I actually talk about more yodes, um, and when you have a yod, which is in these are sesquiquadrates in a square, a yod is a sextile and two in conjuncts. Of the two, this is the one that's a little bit is more difficult, more pointed. Um it, Thor's hammer, as you know, if for those of you who do the Marvel thing, I think Thor's with Marvel, don't don't get at me because I don't know that stuff. Um, you know, he's that hammer, boom, 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 thunder, thunder, right? And so the who's holding the hammer but the people? The people are holding the hammer. And and Saturn here is activating this Saturn and Pisces, perhaps asking us for our compassion, for uh, the 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 mission Saturn in Pisces is a spiritual mission. We have a spiritual mission now. The vibration of the day is the Four of Wands, and so we can see here. This is a uh, from the Spellcaster's deck. This is a hand fasting ritual, but this is about coming together uh, and building. You know that firm spiritual foundation that we can base things on. Now this cycle began with the Mercury Pluto conjunction. I talked about it. It occurred on the um, on the fifth of February, twenty twenty four. That vibration of that day was the devil. Fifteen six. This is a it was actually a Capricorn vibration, but this speaks to us of choosing between the light and the dark. This speaks to us, and so we knew from the beginning that our minds we were going to be given choices: the light or the dark. Which direction do you want to go? The, the vibrate this uh, initial conjunction happened at one of Aquarius and old Adobe mission in California is about our lasting values. And it's this first degree of Aquarius, of course, has been very potent. We had back in 2020 Saturn and um, Jupiter on that degree. We've had a number of powerful conjunctions at that degree as Pluto has been sort of moving back and forth between uh, Capricorn and, and, um, and Aquarius, and we're going to be at that degree again, um, and again, because we're not quite done with Pluto and Capricorn, but we're not going to talk about that today. Now we have Mercury at three degrees of Taurus, steps to a lawn blooming with clover. This is the symbol. Uh, Mercury, of course, is the, of these two, of this combination is the communication, right? Determined effort, the path of humble aspirant path of a humble aspirant towards self-fulfillment after seeing the light in the survival base in a survival base square so this is about determined effort after seeing the light the light is shining on what's going on pluto at three degrees of aquarius deserter from the navy refusal to accept the unacceptable refusing to comply with inappropriate authority we can see the shift here right we can see the change moving away from that which is inhumane crisis in action based on the information being uncovered see the hammer of thor this is incredibly powerful time of change and we can see over here, we can see there are things coming, right? We know these are things coming here. All right, let's continue. 
On the 18th, we have the sun conjunct Jupiter. This day is a 31-4, which is the five of wands. We have the five of wands over here. I like, I love this. This is one of my favorite five of wands because you have these guys like fighting each other and they're like, they're, they don't see where they're going and they don't realize that they're really, and this guy is just sort of stepping back going, uh-oh. Uh, but I'll just let them do what they want to do here, right? All right. Thank you, baby. You can take that one. Thanks. All right, let's continue. Um, the start of the cycle. So anytime two planets are in a conjunction, it's the start of a cycle between them. And of course, the sun, Jupiter is a year cycle and it's about illumination. This is this is the, the synodic cycle where uh, what we believe is illuminated. So our beliefs come into uh, on the table here. Like what what what's going on here? What how do you what do you think about this? How do you what do you believe about this? This to me really speaks to what's going on in Israel and with Iran and all the other stuff that's going on over there and the disruption and how this uh, could be a really big deal if we're not, if somebody doesn't uh, take take the reins here and take the reins out of actually Netanyahu's hands, but we'll see. Um, start of the Sinaitic cycle where we believe it, was, it occurs at 29 degrees of Taurus. Two cobblers working at a table, which is respecting other people's points of view. So this is an illumination. Maybe, perhaps, this is the illumination that we're going to have to stop this, and 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 really start to go in a new direction with this. Um, understanding someone else's view, else's way of being and seeing life requires more objectivity about our own opinions and beliefs, respecting other ways of being and doing and so this is really about uh opening up to uh the fact that we look at things in a different way and yet we still have to uh avoid the disasters that can happen when we allow that energy to uh become violent the ascendant uh i wanted to um look at the ascendant here in this chart mainly because the ascendant and this is for the U.S. And of course, the ascendant is sort of how we're facing the situation. It's in Virgo, which is about being helpful. Uh, but it is trine um, Uranus. And uh, what is that? I can't see. I have my, uh, Uranus and Venus. You see that? There's a trine there. So I wanted to see what uh, the degree of, of this ascendant was for this chart. And uh, an animal trainer, overcoming prideful self-love. Patience and self-control are prerequisites for spiritual advancement, overcoming prideful self-love. You know, that elitism, that uh, exceptionalism that we talk about, uh, and we talk about it, but we don't necessarily live up to it, right? And so this is an interesting, um, just a very interesting um, symbol for this particular time. All right, uh, we have Venus conjunct Uranus at that same degree, channeled aggression, right? And uh, here, where is it? Here it is, Venus, Venus and uh, Uranus in the 12th house in the in the U.S. chart. Um, the U.S. Mars, the Sibley chart, is at 22, which is right here. Um, and so we have the ascendant here um, in Gemini. This is also... Uh, Let's see, what's at 25? This is not, uh, we have uh, Trump's uh, son is at 23 or 24 of Gemini, 23, I think, of Gemini. So we could see that he would maybe be a, um, uh, also uh, Venus conjunct Uranus, money uh, and, uh, and, and, and illumination perhaps around money. This 24 degrees. Uh, is at the top of Trump's chart, his MC. Uh, so this does uh, uh, require him. We might see him actually do something aggressive. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I was listening to uh, Susan Lynn, and she was talking about him throwing a chair. And I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe we'll find out who he wants to shoot on Fifth Avenue and get away with it, right? 
Yeah, he has a way of telescoping everything that he does. Maybe when he said that, we all sort of took it as a joke, but perhaps that was his plan all along to see if he could get away with with, uh, with that. I don't want to use the word, but <laughs> it's very interesting. Very interesting thought that rolled into my head while I was watching Su Susan Lynn, which happens a lot when I watch Susan Lynn. Anyway, lots of ideas come into my head. <sighs> oh, my goodness. Anyway, so... Uh, Venus conjunct Uranus, sudden change in love and money can occur under this influence. Uranus's rebellious nature combined with Venus's love of things and relationships creates exciting and often unstable, but ultimately illuminating situations. So we're definitely going to be illuminated about something here. And of course, if you happen to have this in your chart, this happens to be on my Venus. We'll see what gets illuminated. All right. So, um, and then I think this is, yes, uh, on also on the uh, eighth, is it the 18th or the 19th? Oh my goodness. Hold on one second. I know what day I'm on. Oops. The 18th. Okay. Actually, I'm sorry. One second. Let me see here. Okay, so this happens. So we're on the ninth. I thought so. We're on the nineteenth now. So we're on the next day. We're on my my anniversary. <laughs> All right. Let's see what's happening on my anniversary. Ah, Mars conjuncts the North Node at fifteen degrees of Aries. Now Mars, uh, Aries is a Mars rule sign. The fifteenth degree, the middle degree of any sign, is in its way a a, a tipping point, sort of. Right, first 15 degrees and the second 15 degrees. It's the second decan of Aries, and the second decan of Aries is a sun ruled decan. So it's 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 Mars Sun sort of energy. Um an Indian weaving a ceremonial blanket, that's 15 degrees of Aries, cosmic consciousness. We are so supported through this we are not alone in this if you want to see a change there are there is higher vibrational there is there's guides there's the, the light is with us we're all evolving together we just have to ask for help ask for help you don't know where you're what you're seeing this is a 32 5 this is a victory this is a victory this is a freedom day right the six of wands living more and more as a realized being, sanctifying life itself. Please, sanctifying life itself. Mars um, Mars conjunct um, the North Node. Mars is in Aries. This is the path of Aries on the tree of life. It's actually the path of the emperor. We have the North Node there in Aries. We have, it, it's not just a North Node. What else is in Aries? We have Chiron. Chiron is on this path. Mars is on this path. The North Node is on this path. Connecting the Sun and Uranus. Uh, this is the Sun. This is the Sephiroth of the Sun in Taurus. This is Uranus in Taurus. We just had a Sun-Uranus conjunction. You can see that this is the active part of the tree. Father, Son. Father, son, past, present. So in a way, we're really being asked to let go of the past and be in the present in order to create something new, new uh, Aries, right? Uh, living more and more as a realized being, sanctifying life itself, finding an inner balance of polarities, we are raised into cosmic consciousness. The first only moment, first at first only momentary, we revisit this higher state repeatedly, holding it for longer and longer periods. So we're being asked to move into a higher vibrational state of which we're not always comfortable when it's we're not always aware. It can be scary and, and we may not be able to hold it. Our physical body may not be able to hold the higher vibrational state. So we fall back into a lower state, but we can continue. It's like it's like climbing up a mountain. The first time you try to climb the mountain, you make it like a couple of steps before your 
you're puffed out, but every day that you attempt to climb that mountain, eventually you get the, the stamina and the will and the, and the capacity to stay higher on the mountain and uh, see a bigger and broader perspective and a bigger picture that helps us to, to re to create the world that we want to see. Right. Um, at first, only momentarily, we visit the higher states, repeatedly holding it for longer periods. Mystics metaphorically refer to this as being robed in the universe, weaving a seamless robe or spiritual vestiture, becoming a new, unique being of light. This is the fulfillment of our desire to differentiate and express ourselves entirely creatively. Creatively creating our, our reality with our thoughts, and our deeds, with what we focus on, where we put our attention. Yes, things are terrible. Yes, people are suffering. Yes, but focusing on the problem instead of focusing on the solution will only bring more problems. So we need to be aware of what's going on, but we also need to focus our intention on where we want to go, the future, Aries, what do we want to create? Okay. And then the sun making a, um, a, a waxing uh, sextile to, um, to Neptune. Now, Neptune at this point is at the last degree of Pisces. It's made it to the last degree of Pisces. Now, Neptune is not going, and, and Neptune's been in Pisces since 2011, remember? Um, it's not going to... Uh, it's not going to leave Pisces this year. It's going to stay there. It's going to go retrograde soon. It's going to back up. And so, uh, but we're coming to the very, very edge of Pisces, which is the last sign of the Zodiac. Pisces can be about martyrdom. Pisces can be about um, illusion and delusion. And of course, we know here in the U.S., Trump has been a big part of that, Right. Actually, the U.S. is very much a, a Neptunian uh, place. We have Neptune high in our chart, in the Sibley chart, and we all talk about the American dream. Um, but if we can't do the things that are needed to support a dream, then uh, our dream becomes a nightmare, does it not? Okay. So we have the themes of creativity through art, music, crafts, writing, and drama are highlighted with this energy as are the inner paths of mysticism, psychic sensitivities, as ways of cooperating with the Neptunian impulses and moving us toward the solar center. The sun is the life giver. This is a communication between the life-giving sun and spirit. Now, as I sit here, we just had like four or six mass coronal injections, ejections from the sun, and I, they said they could see the, that you might be able to see the sort, the northern lights as far down as Alabama. Um, the sun is very active in a very active state. And as I understand it, when the sun sends out these mass coronal ejections, it is impregnating the atmosphere. Atma means soul, sphere, the sphere of souls with new souls coming in from the solar energy. And so there's a lot of help. There's a lot of aid. And uh, we can do this, guys. We can do this. The sun at 30 degrees of Taurus, totally intent upon completing an immediate ta task. A man is deaf to any allurement, uh, penetrative, uh, penetrating his concentration of attention. So this is about somebody who's very, very focused or the need to be very, very focused. Having journeyed far and wide to the full gate, uh, to find the gate to the secret garden, we must strike boldly and not be distracted by anything in the realm, rejecting the false through the unusual power of concentration. And it is sextile, Neptune at 30 degrees of Pisces, a great stone face becoming our own ideal, becoming our own ideal. I honestly don't think the messages could be any less uh, direct any less direct spirit is asking us hi it's very early in the morning i apologize i'm a little slow this is 
my husband brought my coffee in so I could get moving. The symbols couldn't be any, any more direct. It is time for us to create a new world. We're being given the opportunity. We're being given the help. There are many souls who are sacrificing their lives for us to see the truth. And we need to honor those souls. No matter what side, doesn't matter what side of the, the divide they're on. It doesn't matter what country they're in. People want to have a different life. The, the people in Iran want a different life. The people in Israel, I imagine, want a different life. The people in Gaza, I imagine, want a different The people in America, we want to thrive and survive. And we have a lot of challenges ahead of us with with um, with um, climate change and the changes in nature. Our lives are our lives ahead are going to be extraordinarily different than the lives we're living right now, and we have to set the the uh, foundations for a better way of living in more harmony and peace, not just with each other, but with our environment. And that is going to be the future. So uh, we, to a certain extent, have to let go of all these uh, ways of being that no longer serve our evolution. We no longer need to be a victim. We no longer need to be a victimizer. We can let go of that paradigm. There's a new paradigm in town and it is the Aquarian age. And the Aquarian age asks us to raise old boats. And Pluto in Aquarius is going to uncover the shadow of Aquarius. And we are required to move in the direction of the polarity point through this time. And the polarity point of Aquarius is Leo. Not self-involved, narcissistic, I'm the best thing since sliced bread, my way or the highway, Leo. But no, the generous, loving heart of Leo, the sun, the thing that unifies us. In esoteric tradition, this solar system is a second ray solar system, which is the, the ray of love. We are here to learn love. Humanity is fourth ray, harmony through conflict located in the heart. Love one another, love yourself, open your heart with compassion. It is the only way forward, folks. Have yourself a great week. I gotta go. I have to get ready to go to Delaware, uh, see my mom. I have a reading in a little while and I have to get packed. And so I am off. Uh, I will see you again next week when we look at the week ahead, when Jupiter moves into, well, a lot of things. We have the sun moving into Gemini. We have Jupiter moving into Gemini. Uh, more exciting days ahead. And I will hopefully be with you for all of them. Take care, everyone. Much love. Uh, again, if you'd like to support my channel, um, I do have a Patreon. Uh, if you want to support me, I do have a Patreon page. You can become a patron. Uh, as I get more patrons, I can do more specific things. You can, I do have availability for readings. Uh, although for the next couple of days, I'm not going to be available because I'm going to be down in, in Delaware. But after, uh, after the 19th, I should be, uh, I'm coming back on the uh, 18th, I think. I'm coming back on Tuesday, um, Tuesday night. So uh, after that, I, uh, I have availability for uh for appointments so the links are all below and uh yourself a wonderful week everyone and uh, bask in the light of spirit and abundance namaste